Russia's peacekeepers in Karabakh convened direct talks on Saturday between the Azerbaijani and Karabakh Armenian authorities, with the two sides reaching an agreement to restore the region's supplies of natural gas and electricity. A spokesperson for the Karabakh president confirmed the deal, but declined to give a date for the utilities to be restored, stating that they are waiting for steps to be taken by the Azerbaijani side to allow for specialists to reach the location of the power failure and commence repair works. A single power line from Armenia provides Karabakh's electricity. Likewise, a single pipeline supplies gas to the region from Armenia. Both run through areas that came under Azerbaijan's control in the 2020 war. The power line was damaged in early January, prompting power rationing and rolling blackouts across Karabakh. Meanwhile, the gas supply has been repeatedly disrupted and then restored throughout Azerbaijan's blockade of Karabakh, which is now approaching its 80th day. David Babayan, a senior advisor, advisor to President Harutunyan commented on the news of Saturday's deal by stressing that the talks should in no way be considered a dialogue on political issues regarding Karabakh's future. In a statement announcing the utilities deal, the peacekeepers also noted that negotiations to resume the movement of vehicles across the Lachin Corridor continue. The Lachin Corridor is a five kilometer wide strip of land formerly under the control of the Russian peacekeepers that surrounds a key regional highway. It became the only overland route connecting Armenia and Karabakh after Azerbaijan made massive territorial gains in the 2020 war. Azerbaijan has blocked the highway continuously since last December, effectively cutting off Karabakh from the outside world. The blockade has prompted a major humanitarian crisis in the region, including severe shortages of food and medicine. In other news, Hartunyan dismissed Ruben Vartanyan as Karabakh's state minister, putting an end to weeks of swirling speculation that Hartunyan was seeking to oust the billionaire businessman and philanthropist. Harutunyan noted at the time that there are certain positive developments that show that this crisis can be significantly eased in the coming days, tacitly raising the possibility that Azerbaijan may lift the blockade now that Vartanyan has been dismissed. Azerbaijan had repeatedly demanded that Vartanyan resign or be ousted. Earlier this month, Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev said he would be willing to hold direct talks with Karabakh's Armenians only if Vartanyan left office. And SNP Global Ratings has raised the Armenian government's credit outlook to positive from stable, just weeks after Fitch Ratings announced a similar upgrade. Both agencies cited last year's influx of tens of thousands of Russians as a major factor. According to a statement put out last Friday by Standard & Poor's, the war in Ukraine triggered strong inflows of labor and capital from Russia to Armenia, increasing Armenia's potential economic growth rate. Armenia's gross domestic product grew by a record 12. 6% in 2022, according to preliminary data. Armenian banks saw an unprecedented net inflow of $2.5 billion last year, with over 70% of the transfers coming from Russia alone. About 65,000 Russians have moved to Armenia since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine began. Many are highly skilled information technology workers. SMP noted that it is unlikely that there will be a sharp reversal in financial and labor inflows to Armenia in the next 12 months, echoing Fitch's prediction earlier this month that a substantial proportion of new immigrants will stay in Armenia for at least two to three years. And finally, several hundred people gathered in front of the Russian embassy in Yerevan over the weekend to protest the one-year anniversary of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine.